In this video, we are going to talk about one of the most commonly used clustering algorithm, k-means clustering algorithm. This algorithm takes two inputs. The first input is x, which is our set of data points. So these are our feature vectors. And the second input is k, which is the number of clusters. So for k-means clustering algorithm, we need to tell it in advance how many clusters or how many groups do we want. The output of the algorithm is k clusters of the given data points. Before going into the details of the algorithm, let's try it out with scikit-learn. So this is the toy data that we saw before. This is how it looks like as NumPy array, and this is how it looks like as a data frame. Now let's try k-means on this toy data set. For that, first thing we need to do is we need to import k-means from sklearn.cluster. Next, we are creating k-means object. We are passing how many clusters we want, and we can do that using this n underscore clusters parameter. Here we are telling it to create three clusters because we know that in our toy data set, there are three clusters. Next, we are fitting k-means on our data set. Now note that we are only passing x here. Remember that this is unsupervised learning. We do not have any labels. And we are only passing our feature vectors here. Once we have our model, we can call predict on our k-means object. So when we do that, we are calling predict on x, and these are the cluster assignments that we get. And this is how these cluster assignments look like as a data frame. So for each point in our data set, we have some cluster assignment. Now this does look like classification. We have some label associated with each example. But the difference is that here these labels, they don't really mean anything. Okay, so in this particular case, points zero and four and five and nine, they have label one. But if we run this again, they might get label two and that's fine. What we care about in clustering is which points got the same label and which points got different labels. In k-means clustering, each cluster is represented by its cluster center. So the model that we learn is actually cluster centers. And we can access these cluster centers using this cluster underscore centers underscore attribute of our k-means object. So these are our cluster centers. Our data is two-dimensional and our k is three in this particular case. And so our cluster centers are of shape three by two. So the shape of cluster centers is k by d. And these are the cluster centers in our data set. So these are our points, and these are the clusters identified by our algorithm. And these stars are cluster centers. Now note that these cluster centers are not actual data points. Now with k-means, we can also predict on unseen examples. Here are a couple of new examples, which are not in our training data. And we can call k-means.predict on these new examples. And this is what we get. So basically, what's happening here is these are our two points. Our first point is close to this blue center. And so it will get assigned to this blue cluster. So our model is just these centers. And whenever you have some new example, 
we find distance of that example with all the centers and we pick the cluster with the minimum distance. Okay, now let's look at the actual algorithm. The main idea of k-means algorithm is that we can represent each cluster by its cluster center and assign cluster membership to each data point. So imagine that you knew cluster centers. You knew how many clusters are there and you knew all these centers. If you have that information, you can simply assign each point in your data set to its nearest center. Similarly, if we knew the assignments, if we knew which point belongs to which cluster, then we can just take mean of those points and we can calculate cluster centers. But the problem is that we do not know either. And a usual computer science solution for this kind of a problem is iterations. So we just iteratively do this and we hope that we get good clusters in the end. Let's look at k-means clustering algorithm in detail. As I mentioned before, the input of the algorithm is this set of data points x and the number of clusters k. The first step of the algorithm is initialization. In this step, we pick k centers randomly for the clusters. Now these centers are not going to be good in any particular way. These are just random centers. But our hope is that we improve these cluster centers iteratively and at some point we converge and come to a reasonable solution. So the next step in the algorithm is this iterative process. We iterate through these two steps. So we have these random centers initially, and with these centers, now we can do cluster assignments for all data points in our data. And once we do that, we can estimate our new centers. Once we have new centers, we can again do cluster assignments for all data points and then again we can estimate new centers and if we do this several times then at some point we converge and we come to a reasonable solution so we repeat this until centers stop changing and that's our uh, that's how we know we have converged or maximum iterations have reached so that's the basic algorithm. Now let's look at an example. Let's execute this k-means algorithm on our toy example. So here I'm just showing you our data. This is our data. And I'm creating a couple of variables here. So k is our number of clusters, which is three. Our first step is initialization. Let's create k random centers for our data set. In our case, k is 3. So we have these k random centers. Next step is this iterative process. We repeat these two steps until our center stop changing. And the first step is cluster assignment. And the second step is updating our cluster centers. Okay, so now how do we do cluster assignment? We do cluster assignment by finding closest center for each data point. So for example, suppose this is our data point. This orange point is our data point. What we do is we calculate distances of these data point with all cluster centers. And then we pick the cluster center with minimum distance. And that's the cluster assignment for this particular point. We do that with all examples. And here I have written a function update z to do that. 
So we calculate Euclidean distances between x and all centers. And then we perform cluster assignment based on the closest center. Then the next thing is updating our cluster centers. Now that we have our new cluster assignments, we want to compute new cluster centers. And again, I have written a function here to calculate new cluster centers. Now let's execute this on our toy data set. So this is our iteration one. In our first iteration, we have our random centers. And the first thing that we do is we do cluster assignment. So we assign each example to the closest cluster center. We use the function that I wrote, and this is our new cluster assignment. And this is how it looks like. These are our centers, and all these points colored in red, they are closest to this red center, and that's why they are marked as red. These two points are marked as black, and then there is this one point which is marked as blue. Now that we have new cluster assignments, we can calculate new cluster centers. And again, I'm using the function that we wrote before, update centers. And now in this iteration, in our first iteration step two, now our cluster centers have changed. So our red cluster center was here before, and now it has moved here because there are these red points here, and so they pull the center in this direction. Similarly, our black center has moved from here to here. And because we are taking the mean of current cluster assignments, this is kind of this point is kind of pulling the cluster center. For blue cluster center, there is just one point and nothing happened here in this iteration. Now in the next iteration with this new cluster centers, we again do cluster assignments. And these are our new cluster assignments. And these are the colors for our current cluster assignments. So now what we see is that since our red cluster center moved here, now for this point, the blue cluster center is the closest one. So this particular point changed it color. It was red before and now it has become blue. Now in iteration 2, step 2, we calculate new cluster centers again. And now our cluster centers have moved again. So the black cluster center didn't move. The red one moved a little bit. Again, these points are pulling this center. And now that we have this new blue point, the cluster center for blue has also moved. And we keep doing that. So this is our third iteration. We get new cluster assignments and we calculate new cluster centers. And again, our blue and red cluster centers are moving here. This is our iteration four. Again, we calculate cluster assignments and we compute new cluster centers. And now what we see is that our cluster centers, they are not moving anymore. They are not changing anymore. Okay, so at this point, we can know that the algorithm has converged. So just to show you, I'm also carrying out iteration five. So nothing will change here, but I just want to demonstrate it to you. So these are our new cluster centers for iteration five. And again, our cluster centers, they haven't changed. In iteration four and five, we notice that the centroids were not changing anymore. When this happens, we know that the algorithm has converged and so we stop. Now k-means always converges, but it doesn't mean that it finds the right clusters. It can converge to a suboptimal solution. 
Now here I'm showing you summary of how our centroids changed in each iteration. So it took like three iterations here. So these were our initial centers. And this red cluster, this red cluster center, it, in the first iteration, it changed from here to here. Then in the second iteration, from here to here. In the third iteration, it changed from here to here. Now, the number of steps required to converge depends upon your initialization. In this particular case, we started with these three cluster centers, and it took three steps to converge. But if we had started with different cluster centers, then the number of steps required to converge would have been different. So initialization is very important in k-means clustering, and we will talk about it in a bit. Now for k-means algorithm, it is required to specify the number of clusters, that is n underscore clusters or k. Now in our toy example, it was okay to do it because we had some idea about the number of clusters. But this is not always the case in real world examples. In the next video, we will talk about some methods that help us to pick an appropriate value for k.